Welcome back to my greenhouse. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Joe. And welcome back to part two of this video on better understanding our cactus and other succulent plant names and plant labels. You'll recall in part one we spoke about common names and the scientific or botanical names of our cacti and other succulents. And we also spoke about all botanical and scientific names consisting of a genus and a species name. But in actual fact, very often we come across names that consist of more than just the genus and the species name. There's a third name and in fact between the species and that third name there's often an abbreviation. In this second part of the video we're going to be looking at the most common abbreviations used and a number of possible third names and what they actually mean. Generally there are four different abbreviations used in front of that additional third name. Let's take a look at them one by one. So, number one, if it says SSP dot or sub SP dot, that stands for subspecies. And a subspecies, that's a population of plants that occurs as a distinct, separate community, geographically separated from the main species population. So a separate growing location to the main growing location of the species. Now, number two, abbreviation number two. If it says VAR dot or V dot, that's short for variety. And what is a variety? A variety is when the plant is only very slightly differing in its appearance from the main species. And quite importantly, it still grows in that same area within and alongside the main population of the species. So it's just a subset of variety that looks slightly differently. Now, although quite a few plant labels will actually feature that VAR, the variety abbreviation, as far as I'm aware, botanically, that variety may not really be too relevant or too important as these differences in appearance can often just be purely the results of environmental differences like the soil, the altitude or other factors that can influence the looks and appearances. Now, the third abbreviation we could find is F dot or forma. And that really is the abbreviation or the word for a form. And that could be just a very special, distinctly recognizable form of a specific species or subspecies of a cactus or also of a succulent like euphorbia. These can either occur naturally, so in nature in their habitats, or as a result of breeding by humans, horticulturalists basically. Now what do we mean by forms? Generally among cacti and other succulents we recognize four different types of forms. It can be a variegated form, it can be a crested form, it can be a monstrose form, or it can be a nude or spineless form. What do those four forms actually really mean? What are they? Now a variegation is usually a appearance of a differently colored zone in the leaf or in the stem of the plant. There's numerous variegation examples of the result of breeding by horticulturalists. Now very well known is another type of form and that's the crested forms of cacti or other succulents. Now a crested or crustate form is a rare mutation of abnormal growth in a plant that produces elongated or flattened tissue cells. 
An example here could be Euphorbia lactea forma cristata. A monstrous mutation would be a form that has even more distortion than a crested mutation. It usually involves all of the meristematic tissue in a plant and it results in club-like or cylindrical shapes and uneven surfaces. You would recognize, for instance, as an example, the Pachycereus shotti forma monstrosus. And there's quite a few other cacti that have these monstrous forms. Then, if we're dealing with a nude or spineless form, that would be, as the name says, a form of a plant that, often bred in cultivation, largely or completely lacks its normal set of spines or thorns. So, an example here, staying with our Echinocactus gruzoni examples, would be Echinocactus gruzoni forma nudum. Well, there's the cultivars, the hybrids, and those of course occur as a result of cross-pollination between different subspecies, species, or even genera. They can be either natural hybrids, so occurring in nature, or horticultural, so bred hybrids. And often fantasy names are used for these cultivated hybrids. These, by the way, are written in capital letters, and very often they're actually indicated with the abbreviation CV, so that stands for cultivar or cultivated variety. And as the word says, they're actually cultivated and selected by human breeders, horticulturalists. Again, a great example around Echinocactus gruzoni. Echinocactus gruzoni CV or cultivar brevispinum. Very frequently, these hybrids are actually also annotated with an X, which is written in front of the genus name or in between the genus and the species name or even in between the names of the plants that were used as parents for the hybridization. Now that we have the main abbreviations and the most common types of third name, so to speak, I'd also like to mention that there's actually a combination of the previous abbreviations and third names possible. Especially if, for example, cristate forms are bred by horticulturalists and become cultivars. So then we may often find a form combined with a cultivar. And some of these names can become quite long and look, again, horribly complicated. But not to worry, you now understand the actual components. So combining these components shouldn't now be as big a problem to understand as before. Especially when you buy plants in specialist cactus nurseries, then you may actually also, behind the genus and the species name, for example, find the abbreviation, often two letters or three letters, and a number behind that genus and species name. Now, that would refer to the actual original collector and a collection list number. So, for instance, HU82 would refer to Horst 82. So that would refer to a plant list of Horst who actually had that particular plant as number 82 on the collecting plant list out in nature, originally finding and describing cacti in their natural habitats. Another frequent question is, do botanical names ever change and how come a cactus name in a book will often also list several so-called synonyms or synonymous names? 
Great questions. Well, over the past 200 or so years, many botanists and other experts have had a go at classifying the family of cactus plants, the Cactaceae. And depending on whether the person was more of a scientific lumper or a splitter, the result of these reclassifications were either having less or more names being used. Also, names have unfortunately often been changed with every new classification or reclassification. So, as a result, there are often so-called synonym names or synonyma. These are synonymous scientific names existing for the same cactus. Now, strictly speaking, only the most recent name from the most recently published classification will be the only valid names, and the previous, older names become invalid. So at times you can imagine it can be a bit hard to keep up with the most recent and valid names for some of our cacti. By the way, I'm sure you'll also find quite a number of plant labels, I have quite a few in my own collection, that actually just spell out the name of the genus and then SP question mark. That's when I really do not exactly know the species of a certain cactus. Perhaps I know the genus, but I am not sure, very uncertain perhaps, about the specific species. So I'll just put a question mark. So that could then be Echinocactus SP or Echinocactus SP question mark, just to show that the species is unspecified or unknown for now. And for all of those I haven't lost so far, here's two more pieces of information that I think are purely of interest really for the real die-hard cactus name nerds and enthusiasts. First of all, strictly speaking, both the genus and the species names are written in italics. Also the subspecies name. Not however in italics are the names of hybrids or cultivars. That was fact and info number one. Number two, especially if you're reading books or scientific publications on cacti or other succulents, then there will often be a person's name written behind the genus and the species name. That name will refer to the name of the person, the author, who described that plant scientifically. If another scientist now decides that the plant needs to be reclassified to a different genus, then the original, the previous author's name is placed in parentheses and the person who now changed the classification and the name follows without parentheses. So that's the most recent author for the most recent valid scientific name. Right, all clear as mud? Well, hopefully a little clearer at least than before, I hope. So as I say, I hope I haven't lost you, but it's actually quite simple really. So, you know, a very brief summary, a very brief recap would be, we can either have a common name or we can have a scientific botanical name. The common names, perfectly fine to use, but obviously not unique and not scientifically accurate. And the botanical or scientific names would typically consist of a genus name, a species name, and perhaps a subspecies name, or a variety, or a form. Or we're dealing with a hybrid or a cultivar. <laughs> Quite straightforward, right? Right, that was part two of the video. Thank you so much for watching. And I hope you enjoyed that and you actually found the information useful. It is probably a little bit of a dry topic, but as I stressed at the beginning of the video, it is really, really important for you to know what the actual name of your plants are and also how to better read the plant labels that come along with your plants. Knowing the plant names will really help you understand how to better cultivate your plants, how to better grow them, get them to flower, and making sure that they're actually staying in good, healthy condition. If you are finding this video interesting and useful, 
then please do not forget to actually like and or comment on the video. And also, if you haven't already done so, please do subscribe to this channel. And when you're subscribing, please don't forget to actually hit the bell icon. That will ensure that you receive automatic notifications about all new uploaded videos on this channel. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Hopefully see you very soon again. Happy growing.